Hello and welcome to this MindBreeze tutorial. Today we will look at how to configure the web connector to index a website both with and without a sitemap. Additionally, we will look at how to analyze both crawl documents and the crawl run using app telemetry. To start with, let's navigate to the MindBreeze Management Center and head to the configuration section. I will add a new index by clicking the add index button and select the correct node and client service and then I will select my data source, the web connector. Clicking apply will generate the template index configuration we need to continue. Let's give the index an appropriate name. We will call it stock snap as this is the website we're planning on indexing today. I will now activate advanced settings and scroll down to the data sources configuration. Here, I will also change the category instance to stock snap and the data source name to pictures. It's important that the category instance in combination with the data source has a unique name. The data source name is simply how this data source will be shown to the end users. Now let's set up our crawling routes. It's important that we do not mix sitemap crawling routes and normal pages in the same connector configuration and instead create two separate connector configurations. Under crawling routes, we can add one or more URLs which should be used as the starting point for our crawler. If we do not have a sitemap available, we can perform a recursive crawl. In this configuration, MindBreeze will follow every link it can find underneath the crawling route. Firstly, I will set up a URL include pattern. This is a regex pattern which the crawler will use to identify which pages it should index. Here, we will add the photo directory. Similarly, the URL exclude patterns below define which URLs should be ignored by the crawler. Finally, we will configure the URLs excluded from filtering. This is another regex pattern which defines pages which should be downloaded for link acquisition but excluded from filtering and indexing. A typical use case for this is to exclude a website's homepage from our index. Then the final step, save and restart on save. Now, we see an error message. This is because the index still requires authentication, but our search client has no authentication methods enabled. Because we're indexing a public website for public search, we will set the index to allow unrestricted public access and stop enforcing ACL evaluation. Then, once again, save and restart on save. The crawler should now be performing the configured recursive crawl. Now, let's configure an index to crawl the same website, but this time we will index via a sitemap. I will add an index and a web crawler in the same way as we did before and give the index and data source appropriate names. One important note is that the sitemap XML needs to comply with the sitemap XML standard. Let's add a crawling root of stocksnap.io slash sitemap.xml. To activate the optimized delta algorithm for sitemaps, we can change the delta crawling option to either sitemap incomplete or complete. For standard crawling, select complete. In this case, only the URLs in the sitemaps will be indexed. If you remove them from the sitemap, they will also be removed from the MindBreeze index. If your sitemap only contains the most recently updated pages and you want to simply update your MindBraze index with these without affecting the other pages in your index, then select Incomplete. Additionally, if your sitemap is very large, it's important to use the stream-based parser. And if you're using gzip sitemaps, then you should enable the gzip compressed sitemaps option. If we check the Clean up non-matching URLs from index option, then at the beginning of the crawl run, the crawler will automatically remove all pages in the index which do not match the given URL include or exclude patterns, with no re-indexing required. Additionally, the invalid document deletion schedule will remove any URLs from the index which are no longer reachable or which have an invalid status code, for example, if they were removed. This schedule is defined via a Crone Quartz expression. Help tools are available to you to help you generate these crone expressions. To find out which status codes deletes the documents, you can navigate to our Web Connector white paper at help.mindbreeze.com. 
then once again save and restart on save. Now let's go to our out of the box reporting tool, AppTelemetry, to analyze our crawl run and crawl documents. In the management center, I will navigate to reporting, telemetry details, and then open this in a new tab. To view the crawler log pool, I'll click on crawler service and then view the telemetry data. Firstly, I will sort the logs by time oldest first. To constrain further, I can add a filter by right-clicking the desired column and clicking Add Filter. Here, I will constrain to all entries where Operation contains Crawl Document. Note that we can see the category and category instance on the right-hand side to easily identify and distinguish our different crawlers. Now I have the view that I want, let's take a deeper look at one entry. Here, we can see an overview of this crawl document, showing each stage in the crawler pipeline and its duration. As well as this, we can click on the Associated Requests tab to see all associated entries in the other log pools available to us, such as the filter service and index service. This gives us a complete view of the lifespan of one document in the MindBreeze pipeline. Firstly, let's look at the filter service, which extracts and processes the textual content of different incoming files. We can see that the filtering was a success and also the duration of this filtering. Next, we can see the content filter service. This is a part of the filter service itself. Again, we can see that it was a success and also that there were two entries for our one index document one with the extension HTML and the other with the MES thumbnail URL extension. This is because precisely in this service is where the thumbnail for this indexed web page is generated. We can also take a look at the index service. Here we can see that our HTML web page and our thumbnail were successfully inserted into the index. Finally, we can take a look at the network requests. Here we can see each network request that was made to crawl this document including information such as the URL, host, port, scheme, and so on. Again, we can see the duration for each request. Now that we've had a look at one specific document, let's take a look at a whole crawl run. As before, I will navigate to reporting telemetry details and view the telemetry data for the crawler service. I will add a filter to the operation column to find all entries that contain crawl run. Here, we can see all of our crawl runs, including their status and status description. Here, we see that a crawl run successfully finished. Again, we can take a look at each crawl run in more detail by clicking on an entry and viewing the bottom pane. If we look into the index process and crawler service crawl, we can view different events in detail for this crawl run.